Hi guys, welcome to the start of chapter 11. Uh, we are going to do 11.1, .1, simplifying rational expressions today. Our objective for the day is that I can simplify rational expressions. So the first things first, we've got our uh, definition here and a rational expression is an expression that can be written in the form of one polynomial divided by another. Uh, excluded values are any values for a variable for which the rational expression is undefined. So what this means is the denominator is zero. We cannot divide by zero, so any number for our variable that is gonna cause us to divide by zero, we need to exclude from our solutions. So one of the big things that comes up in this chapter, and I've been kind of warning you about it going in, is that we are going to be factoring. So if you're struggling with this, you need to brush up on chapter eight, which is also a fantastic review for the final. So problem A, we've got x plus three over two x plus six. Now in our denominator, we can take out a greatest common factor of two from each of the terms. And we're left with x plus three divided by two times the quantity x plus three. Now notice we've got the same thing on the top and on the bottom, so those two pieces are gonna cancel out and we are left with simply one over two. That is the reduced form of this rational expression. Now the only other thing we need to do here is figure out what those excluded values are. So that's gonna be anything that makes the denominator zero. So we set the denominator to x plus six equal to zero and solve for x. 2x is equal to negative six, so x equals negative three. So x cannot be negative three. Any other number will work except for negative three. It will make it undefined. So that is our excluded value, okay? Now let's look at letter B. We've got seven X squared over seven X cubed. We can reduce 21 over seven to three. There's two X's on top, three X's on the bottom. Cancel out what we need to cancel out and we're gonna let, be left with. An X on the bottom. Three over X. Because we have three X's in the denominator, two on the top, so there's only one left standing down below. Now what is the value that is going to make the denominator zero? And it is going to be when we plug in zero. All right, letter C, 18y squared over four y plus eight. Well, we can take out a common factor from the denominator uh, and it looks like we can take out a four from that. So we're gonna be left with four times the quantity y plus two. And in our numerator, we still have 18y squared. So we're just gonna write that again. So what can we cancel? Well, I don't see any variables in the same, in the top and the bottom, but I do see that we can reduce 18 and four. So we can reduce that by dividing both of them by two. So we're gonna get nine Y squared over two times the quantity Y plus two. Now, to get our excluded value, we go back to our original, four y plus eight is equal to zero. Solve for y. And y cannot be negative two. All right, letter D, we can take out great, uh, greatest common factor from the denominator. So we've got two n minus three in the numerator. We factor out a three and we're left with two n minus three in the denominator. We have common values in the numerator and denominator so they cancel out. We're left with two thirds, two thirds. That's what I meant. All right, now we just need to figure out what our excluded value is. Six n minus nine is equal to zero. Add nine to both sides, divide by six. And n is equal to three halves. Go ahead and just leave that as a fraction. Okay. Our last problem, letter E, 
We've got uh, 26C cubed plus 91C. Well, I did some, some playing around with my calculator and I found that 13 is a common factor for both 26 and 91. So we can factor out a 13 from both terms in the numerator. So we're going to be left with 13 and we also can take out a C. And so we're left with C squared plus 7. And in the denominator we've got 2 C squared plus 7. It's 2 C squared plus 7. I got it. And in the numerator. All right. So scrunched in there is a 2c squared. So now, do we have the same thing in the numerator and the denominator? We do, so that can be canceled out. The 2c squared plus 7s cancel, and we're just left with 13c. And now we just need to find our uh, excluded value. So we've got 2c squared plus 7. Subtract 7 from both sides. We get 2c squared equals negative 7 divide by 2. C squared is equal to negative 7 halves. Can we take the square root of a negative number? Yes, we can. Yes, we can. So for this one, there are no excluded values. There's nothing that we can plug in the denominator that would make this to be 0. Alright, now problem two is simplifying a rational expression that contains a trinomial. Once again, this is going to be heavily reliant on your skills from chapter eight. We need to factor. So we need to always look for common factors that we can pull out. So we can bring out a two and we're left with x minus four. And when we factor x squared minus two x minus eight, we get an x minus four and an x plus 2. So we cancel out our 2 x minus 4's and we're left with 2 times the quantity or 2 divided by the quantity x plus 2. Now our excluded values are what's going to make the denominator 0 so those are going to be the roots of our quadratic down there. Hey all this is coming back to us. So our two excluded values are going to be a positive 4 and a negative 2. Okay, letter B. The numerator we can factor out. Uh, we're looking for things that multiply to a positive 2 and add to a negative 3. So we're going to have a minus 2 times the quantity a minus 1. And that's all divided by 3 times the quantity a minus 1. We've got a minus 2 over 3 is our reduced form. And we are looking for what's going to make the denominator 0. So a minus 1 is equal to 0. So a cannot be equal to negative 1. Or positive 1, sorry, positive 1. Letter C, we're going to look to factor out a common factor. We can take out a 6. We're left with Z plus 2. In our denominator, hey, look, we've got an A term, so we're going to have to do box method. Uh, so 2 times 6 is 12, so we're looking for factors of 12 that add up to 7. Those are going to be 3 and 4. So we've got 3Z, 4Z. Let's go ahead and factor that. So we can factor out a 2z and a 3, and a z and a 2. And so we've got z plus 2, 2z plus 3. Do we have something that cancels? Yes, we do. We reduce it. We've got 6 over 2x plus 3. 
our two excluded values, we've got uh, set z plus two equals to equal to zero, so that's just z is not equal to negative two. And two z plus three is equal to zero, so z cannot be equal to negative three halves. Positive three halves. Negative three halves. Negative three divided by positive two is negative three halves. Right. Okay. All right. Uh, letter D. We've got factor the top and the bottom for this one. So you can factor C squared minus C minus six into C minus three and C plus two. Don't look at me like that. I'll get it. All right, and our denominator can be factored into C plus three and C plus two. The reduced form, C minus three over C plus three. And C cannot equal negative three or negative two. Okay. Last one, letter E, we've got five X plus 10, so we can factor out a five from that and we're left with X plus two. The denominator we can factor as X minus three and X plus two, because we need something that multiplies to negative three and, or to negative six and adds to negative one. So the X plus twos cancel. Five over X minus three is our reduced form, and x cannot equal positive three, and x cannot equal negative two. So problem three is telling us to recognize opposite factors, and what we can see in letter A is that two x minus five and five minus two x are the opposite signs of one another. So if we rewrite them in the same order, we've got opposite signs. So that means we can factor out a negative one from one of those terms. So we take it out of the denominator, and we're left with two x minus five. When we take a negative one out, those can cancel. So what we're just left with is negative one. Okay. Problem three, y squared minus 16. Hey, that looks like the difference of two perfect squares to me. That's one of our special cases. So we've got y minus four and y plus four over, well, I see a four minus y. That's the opposite factor. So we can take a negative one out there. So we've got y minus four. Those can cancel. And we're left with negative one times the quantity y plus four. Letter C, we can factor out a negative three from the numerator and we're left with negative one plus D or three D. And when we factor the denominator, we're looking for factors of negative six that add up to positive one. So that's going to be a positive three and a negative two. All right, so we pull out our common factors. We've got one, we've got a 2d, we've got a 3d, and we've got a negative one. So we've got 3d minus one and 2d plus one as our two factors. What cancels out? Our 3d minus one, even though they're written in the, a different order, the signs are still the same there. So we're left with negative three over 2d plus one. Letter D, our final example for this problem, we have three minus three z, so we could factor out a negative three from that. 
and we're left with negative 1 plus z. The denominator, we can factor out a negative 2 from that, or just a 2. Uh, and we're left with z squared minus 1. Hey, that looks like one of those perfect squares again, one of those special rules. We're dealing with a difference of squares. So z minus 1, z plus 1, and there's the 2 on the outside. So we're left with negative 3 over 2 times the quantity z minus 1. Well, I crossed out the wrong one. All right, so our last problem for the day is some word problems using rational expressions. So we've got a square that has a side length of 6x plus 2 and a rectangle with a width of 3x plus 1 that has the same area as the square. We want to know what the length of the rectangle is going to be. Well, how do we, Mazirzo, how do we find the area of a square again? Side squared. Side squared. So we can write 6x plus 2 times 6x plus 2. And how did we find the, the area of a rectangle again? I think it was length times width. Length times width. And we know, we know the length. We know the length is 6x plus 2. So we can write that. And if we know the area, how can we find the width? Well, we just need to divide by the length, right? So we're just going to divide by 6x plus 2. Or sorry, 3x plus 1. Thank you. I'm looking at the wrong one. All right, so we're going to divide by 3x plus 1. Can we take out a common factor from any of those in the numerator? I believe we can. We can factor out a, a 2 from one of them. So we're going to have a 2 times the quantity, 3x plus 1 times 6x plus 2 over 3x plus 1. We only needed to factor one of the terms in the numerator because it would cancel out in the denominator. So we're left with just 2 times the quantity 6x plus 2 or if you wanted to distribute that it would be 12x plus 4. That is our simplified form. Okay. Letter B, we've got the length of a rectangular prism is about five units more than the width, W. And the volume of the prism, we're told, is W cubed plus 7W squared plus 10W. And we want to know what is the height of the prism. So we know that volume is length times width times height. And we want to just get that height by itself, so all we're going to do is we're going to divide the volume by the length and the width. And that's going to leave us, whatever's left behind is going to be the height. So we're going to start by writing the, for the formula for the volume in the top. So we got w cubed plus 7w squared plus 10w. All right, and in our denominator, we can just write our length and our width that we know. So we know that the length is five units more than the width, so w plus five. And we know that we have the width, which is just w. And whatever is going to be left over when we simplify that is going to be the height. It's whatever is going to be left. So let's factor the numerator. We can take out a common factor of w from all three terms, and we're left with w squared plus 7w plus 10. And that's over 5 plus w times w. And we can factor w squared plus 7w plus 10. We're looking for factors of 10 that add up to 7, so that's going to be a positive 5 and a positive 2. And we've got the 5 plus w in the denominator and the w in the denominator. Look for what cancels. We've got a w plus 5, w plus 5, so we're left with w plus 2. 
So the height is equal to the width plus two units. That is all for today. We will see you in class.